Ladies and gentlemen, NVIDIA are considering doing something absolutely awesome, at least according to some rumours that are floating around right now, and that is they are considering raising the bus width of the proposed specification of GB202 from 384 bit all the way up to 512. Correspondingly, this would not only see a massive increase in memory bandwidth available to the RTX 50 higher end of, uh, cards, but also a lot of additional RAM as well. We're going to be talking about those rumours plus some very interesting stuff for Intel's next generation processors right after this quick message from the video sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. Now, while there is a lot of focus at the moment on AMD's Zen 5 microprocessor architecture, and for good reason, they are apparently very good. I'm hearing from multiple sources and other leaks online are pointing to much the same thing. Intel are no slouch as well. They will basically release, and I'm simplifying things here a lot, and we're not going to be talking about server stuff, so that's an entirely different kettle of fish uh, two different types of processor for customers basically we have Luna Lake as well as Arrow Lake sharing essentially the same microprocessor architecture with some differences but a very interesting uh, statement has been made by Bionic Squash on Twitter and they are essentially telling us that despite the TDP of these processors being pretty much the same as the U versions of Meteor Lake there is an almost 50% increase in performance now what's rather telling about all of this is that well it's multi-threading but we are also missing of course the um uh, hyper-threading support that we see with Meteor Lake and other processors for example you know the 10900k the 12900k all of the performance cores basically speaking have hyper-threading so it's going to be absolutely intriguing to see how Intel's Arrow Lake processors fare in the real world so you can see Bionic Squash's tweet on screen MTL, which is Meteor Lake U, of course, is 15 watts versus Lunar Lake 17 watts, um, but an almost 50% increase in multi-threading performance. And this is using uh, Cinebench 23, as well as Geekbench 5.4.5, that's a bit of a mouthful, as a point of comparison. Now, it is worth noting, of course, that these chips can raise and lower in the TDP. An official slide from... Um, Intel, although it was actually leaked by Yuki ANS and credit to uh, videocards.com for compiling this article, I'll leave a link in the video description, and uh, they basically state that we can see a fanless design at just 8 watts all the way up to 30 watts, and of course that would have a direct corresponding impact in, let's say, the clock frequency of the processor. It will also be very interesting to see how Arrow Lake fares in terms of the clock frequency. Early reports that I was hearing is that Arrow Lake would see a big regression in clocks, but now I don't think that's going to potentially be the case. I'm hearing that the clock frequencies are much higher than some of the earlier rumors of like low to mid four gigahertz, maybe like five, five and a half gigahertz for the performance cores. Again, we're going to have to see how all of this ends up, you know, being like when the actual processors launch. I do think things are going to be a very interesting battle basically between AMD and Intel. I suspect Zen 5 is going to be absolutely ridiculous though so it's there's going to be a lot of different discussion in terms of which processor is better and it's going to be very interesting to see not just in terms of one application for example Geekbench or Cinebench or something like that but also to see how different applications in single thread and multi-thread scale with different workloads particularly when we're dealing with different amounts of memory bandwidth so I suspect the next generation of products is going to be absolutely very interesting to do benchmarks on. So I want to give you guys an update to the RTX 50 specifications. Now again, these are 
uh, graphics cards, of course, that are not exactly ready to go on store shelves anytime soon. As far as I understand it, these GPUs are currently in simulation at NVIDIA, and while much of the architecture itself is finished in design, they are basically now figuring out what the specification for the various chips, such as GB202, 203, and so forth, are going to end up being. And of course, at this stage, a lot of stuff can change up until pretty much the release date. Uh, they could even release, let's say, a new, you know, a proposed specification which would increase the TDP of the card which would have impacts in clock frequency and so of course up until the release date a lot of stuff is going to change and one of those things seems to be the memory bus width. Now Copperdite 7 had initially been hearing reports that we would see a 512-bit memory interface for GB202. I personally was hearing 384 being touted by my sources and basically Copperdite 7 uh, also eventually heard much the same specification, 384, but now he's hearing that 512 is again on the table. Now, as of the time I'm recording this, um, I haven't been able to verify that with my sources because basically time zones are a pain in the ass and are pure evil, but I'm reaching out to various people to figure out whether there's a sp uh, proposed specification. Now, one thing I can tell you guys, and I talked about this in a video which I think was uploaded yesterday, I have heard of a refresh that could potentially happen for GB, um, sorry, for RTX 50, and maybe that could be a 512-bit bus, who the hell knows, but 512 does seem to be considered. Copperdite is also stating that he might, um, there might be a possibility that there could be a chiplet-based version. Again, that was something I was hearing at some point, but as far as I last heard, <laughs> that had been scrapped, but now maybe it's back on the table. Uh, I was hearing that basically the chiplet version would be essentially a couple of GB202 chips that are essentially bolted together, um, albeit with perhaps some of the SMs shaved off or whatever, just so that we don't end up with like, you know, you needing to build a custom nuclear power station outside of your home to be able to power this thing. Um, but who knows, maybe it's back on the table right now. Potentially as a refresh, maybe AMD RDNA 5 is like worrying NVIDIA. That's pure speculation on my part. Again, I've heard that there may be a chiplet version and now Copperdite 7 is saying that there could be a chiplet version. But it's really hard to know because the problem with these rumors, of course, is that you're talking about not only the fact that these products haven't been released, so there can be changes, but also, unfortunately, sometimes you can deal with things like, you know, people speaking different languages that can also add a little bit of complexity. Um, however, I would argue that, uh, you know, I can't, for example, speak Chinese, so, you know, mistranslations aside. I would be very interested, though, to see how this actually ends up uh, performing, because I suspect Blackwell is going to be an absolutely awesome architecture. The performance that I've been hearing is around a 60% increase in rasterization performance and around a 2.5 times increase in ray tracing performance. Although, granted, that's probably introducing things like DLSS into the mix as well. Copperdite has also said that the current plans for the memory seems to be based on using the uh, 28 GBPS chips. So it will be very interesting to see how Blackwell ends up performing. As far as I understand, unless there's a change in the release dates, who knows, um, basically speaking, Blackwell will probably launch before RDNA 5. So it seems to be RDNA 4, Blackwell, RDNA 5, and then maybe some type of refresh from NVIDIA. I will be super interested, though, to see how AMD actually fights um, Blackwell. Obviously, RDNA 4 is not exactly going to be a high-performance chip. It's basically going to be a little bit faster in some applications than um, the uh, 7900 GRE or GRE or how I like to call it. I suspect RDNA 5 will actually hit the, the money because... Um, as far as I understand anyway, AMD have put a lot of R&D effort into this because these products, RDNA 5, in some form or another, is also going to form the basis of the data center chips for compute. That, of course, you know, has previously been essentially a variant of Vega, um, obviously with a lot of changes at this point. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, CDNA 2, for example, is based on kind of a Vega, well, it has roots back in Vega, let me just say that. 
and uh, now obviously they're starting to switch to RDNA 5 in the future and as far as I understand it the Halo chips are going to be MCM for, um, for server there's a possibility that the gaming chips as well will be and that's one of the reasons that there's been a lot of architectural improvements for RDNA 5 um, so it's going to be very interesting to see how NVIDIA actually does in the gaming space because at the moment they are just minting it in AI so you know in terms of profitability you have to say that the um the gaming chips are i don't want to say they're not important but they're not as high of a priority but at the same time um i think from a pr perspective and just the fact that jensen is very competitive he doesn't exact uh, he doesn't really strike me as the kind of person who's just like oh it's fine let amd have that market it's absolutely cool He's a very competitive person, and that's fine. Like, you know, that's great for us as customers because obviously, you know, relatively speaking, it does push, you know, the best product. And you could make a good argument that if, you know, AMD had been more competitive in some generations, NVIDIA would have put out, you know, let's just say faster GPUs, but that's a, <laughs> that's a rabbit hole. Anyway, with that said, guys, I'm going to let you all go. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.